In this section, you'll get to learn about building and maintaining failover clusters in Windows Server 2019, and some of the new features in that space. In this section, David's going to show us how to build a failover cluster. Once built, he's going to cover how to work with the new cluster set functionality. And finally, he's going to show us how to use storage replicas, another new feature that is available to us. In this video, David's going to show us how to build a failover cluster. We're going to see what we need to set up in regards to storage and networking ahead of time. After that, we'll see how to install the roles required. Once installed, we'll see how to validate and test the nodes for readiness. When the validation is complete, we'll see how to finally create the cluster. And then after the cluster is set up, we'll see how to add the file server role to our new cluster. Then we'll see some Active Directory setup that's required for the cluster. And finally, we'll create a new file share in the cluster. Now here's David. We need to create a new highly available file server. So our best option for this scenario would be to use the failover clustering feature that's included in Windows Server 2019. So we're going to configure a two node failover cluster and configure the general purpose file server cluster role. So let's get started. The very first thing we're going to need to do is take a look at our networking on one of the cluster nodes. So we'll start a PowerShell session to cluster A01 and check the status of the network adapters. Now as we can see, we have two network adapters, one called iSCSI SAN for our storage network, and one called Ethernet that we're going to use for our cluster and client communications. Taking a look at the IP addresses for these NICs, you can see that we have a 10.0.0.0 network for our iSCSI SAN, and a 192.168.2.0 network for the rest of the traffic. Now that we know the state of our network, let's take a look at our storage. So as we can see, we have three disks attached to this cluster node, and all of them are online. Disk 0 is our operating system, disk 1 is our 50 gigabyte disk for our cluster data, and disk 2 is our 1 gigabyte disk to serve as our witness disk. We'll need the witness disk because we have an even number of cluster nodes, and we really do need an odd number so that the cluster can maintain quorum. Also, disks 1 and 2 are iSCSI disks that both cluster A01 and cluster A02 are connected to. Looking at the volumes, we can see our S drive for our cluster storage and our W for our witness disk. So let's disconnect from cluster A01 and connect to cluster A02 and check our storage on our second node. Now again, on cluster A02, we can see that there are three disks but our two shared iSCSI disks are showing us offline. Now this is because cluster A01 is currently connected to those disks. If we were to bring those disks online here, they would appear as offline on cluster A01. Only one node can have these disks online at a time. To confirm that, if we check our volumes on cluster A02, we can see that they don't appear at all in this drive list, only our operating system drive. So now that we've checked our networking and storage, let's disconnect from cluster A02 and move on. Now our first configuration step is to install the failover clustering feature and the file server role to each of the cluster nodes, cluster A01 and cluster A02. So we'll use the invoke command commandlet to allow us to install these features and roles simultaneously to both nodes. And we've also stated that we want the management tools installed and we've used the restart parameter switch so that both of our servers will automatically restart after the installation is complete. Now this is going to take a few minutes, so this would be a great time to go and see if there's any cake left over in the break room from Jody's birthday celebration earlier today. Now that our installation is completed and our servers have rebooted, let's move over to the failover cluster manager console. Now as you can see, we currently don't have any clusters configured we'll need to start the process off by validating our configuration by selecting Validate Configuration from the Actions pane. Now this might seem counterintuitive at first, but it makes sense when you realize that we need to validate our two proposed cluster nodes to ensure that they're properly configured to support a failover cluster. So on the Welcome page here, we can click Next. And on the next page, we need to add the names of our servers, which we can do by entering cluster A01, comma, cluster A02, and click Add. 
Now this process can take a few moments, so we'll need to be patient. And once the servicer added successfully, click next to continue. Now for the testing options, we can choose to run only a select few tests or all tests, which is what we're going to do. We would only run a few tests if we were trying to troubleshoot a specific problem. So we'll leave that on all tests and click next. Now once we've confirmed the settings, we can click next and wait for the tests to complete. Now while this does take a few minutes, I don't think we really need to go and get a second piece of cake. We'll just wait here until the tests are completed. Perhaps we could start work on our documentation. Now that the tests have completed, let's scroll to the bottom of the list to Results by Category. Good news! We can see here that all of our tests have passed. So let's continue on building our cluster by selecting the Create the Cluster Now Using the Validated Nodes checkbox and click Finish. On the Before You Begin page for the Create New Cluster Wizard, click Next. And the first piece of information we need to provide is the cluster name. So I think we'll use Demo Cluster 1 and give it an IP address of 192.168.2.150. This will be the management name and address of our new cluster. So we'll click Next to continue. And the next choice we need to make, which is on the confirmation screen, is whether or not to add all eligible storage to the cluster. If we were creating multiple clusters and wanted to add a specific storage to each one, we might clear this checkbox so that we can manually add storage later. In our case, we're only configuring one cluster. So we'll leave that option selected and click Next. And once again, we find ourselves waiting. There seems to be a lot of waiting in this demo. All right, with our cluster created successfully, we can click Finish and take a look at our cluster. So we'll expand our Demo Cluster 1 node, then Storage, and then click on Disks. As you can see, both disks are online, with cluster A01 as the owner. Now disk 1 is showing as having available storage, and being 50 gigabytes in size, and disk 2 has been configured as the disk witness on our 1 gigabyte disk that we configured. Clicking on Networks, we can see the two networks listed. So if we click on cluster network 1, we can see down in the summary pane, so this is our 10.0.0.0 network, this is our iSCSI SAN. It's not being used for cluster communications, just for storage. Cluster network 2 is our 192.168.2.0 network, and it's in use by cluster and client communication. So if we click back on the demo cluster 1 node, we can see in the summary at the top that the witness is configured to use cluster disk 2. If we click on Nodes, we can see that our cluster is operational and that both nodes are up. Great news! Except that if we click on Roles, we can see that our cluster isn't actually doing anything yet. We still need to add a role. So to add a role, we can click on the Configure Role in the Actions pane and click Next on the High Availability Wizard. Now to start, we're going to be configuring a file server. So we'll go ahead and select that role, and click Next. Now we also stated that this is going to be a general purpose file server, since this is going to be used for our departmental file shares. If this were going to be for an SQL server or virtual machines, we could choose the scale out file server. But our use case dictates that the file server for general use is our best option. So we'll accept the defaults and click Next. Now we need a name for our server so that the clients have something to connect to. So I think we'll go with demo ha files. And we'll give it an IP address of 192.168.2.151 and click next. Now on the storage page, we can choose our 50 gigabyte disk. And then click next. On the confirmation page, click Next again. 
and we'll wait for our role to be configured. All right, now that our role's configured, we can click Finish to close the wizard. All done. Wait, what's this? Oh, our demo HA files role is reporting as having a status of failed. That's definitely not the result we were hoping for. Well, let's take a look at the cluster events to see if we can figure out what went wrong. Now, if we take a look at the last entry in the list, we can see event ID 1194. Looking at the event details, it looks like the cluster couldn't create the computer object in Active Directory for our new role. According to the notes here, we'll need to give demo cluster 1 the create computer objects permission to the OU that the cluster is in, so that it can create the computer objects for the roles. Easily done, we'll just head over to Active Directory users and computers. So the first thing we'll need to do is go to the view menu and click on advanced features so that we can see the required tabs. We'll select the domain clusters, right click on it and click properties, click on the security tab, then click on advanced, and click add. On the permission entries page, we'll click on select a principal, click on object types, to add the computer's type, and then enter demo cluster 1 as the object we're looking for, and click OK. Now we need to ensure that the entry type is allow and applies to is this object and all descendant objects. Now we just need to scroll down a little bit and click on the create computer objects, and then click OK until we return to the console. Now that that's done, let's head back over to the Failover Cluster Manager. So, we'll click back on Roles, and we'll select the Demo HA Files role, and click Start Role. Success! Our file server role is reporting as running. So our last step is going to be to create a file share for our server. So with Demo HA Files selected, we need to click on Add File Share in the Actions pane. Now, as we need a general purpose file server with a basic share, we'll select SMB Share Quick and click Next. Now, as we have only one server, Demo HA Files, we'll leave that selected. And for the share location, we'll click on Custom Path. Uh, we're going to enter S colon backslash department underscore shares and click next. Now we'll change our share name to DEPT for department shares and we'll enter a quick description here. High availability file share and then click next. On the warning about the path not existing we can just click OK to allow the wizard to create the path for us. You'll note here that the Enable Continuous Availability is already selected for us, so the only thing we'll change is to add the access-based enumeration so that the users can only see the folders they have access to. And then we'll click Next to continue. For the permissions, we're going to have one of our junior admins configure the share and folder permissions once the share is created. We'll just click Next to continue for now. So we'll do a quick review of our settings to make sure everything's okay. Yep, looks good. And then we'll click Create to finish. Success! So with the share created, we can click Close. Now let's see if we can connect to the share. So we're going to go to backslash backslash demo ha files backslash department shares. Excellent! We have a brand new failover cluster running the file server role hosting our high availability share. And that's all there is to it.